What's up everyone, this is Brandon from Top10Gamer.com. Today we're going to take a look at the PlayStation 4 uh, versus a $400 gaming PC build that I put together and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each of these. This is part of a uh, 10 video series that I'm doing on the best PC builds for November and December. I know a lot of you are looking into building uh, PCs not only for Battlefield 4 but all the other great games coming out in these months, so hopefully this can help. So let's get to it. Okay, let's jump right into it and take a look at the PlayStation 4 specifications. The price is $399.99 for the basic bundle, but you can save that three cents at both Walmart and Amazon Sweet. And you got the processor is as an AMD Jaguar 8 Core X86 uh, graphics card. It's an AMD Radeon GPU with 1152 shaders. Uh, optical drive, you get a Blu-ray. Uh, for RAM, you get eight gigabytes of memory and hard drive. You get a removable 5400 RPM SATA 2 hard drive that uh, you can go and upgrade later. Okay, so as suggested by several of the viewers, we're going to jump right into the parts list for this PC build before I do any comparisons. If you want to stick around, that's great. I think we've got a lot of important things to say, but you can also check out the part list for this build below if you want to get to it. So uh, let's look at the parts. So for the processor, we've got the Athlon 750K. That's a socket FM2 processor. Uh, the, for graphics card, we've got an XFX HD 7850. For memory, we're, do, we're using uh, 4 gigabytes of Kingston HyperX RAM. I was actually able to find this, um, find a different version of this cheaper yesterday for around $30, but today I've only found uh, some for about $35, $40. Bucks. So look around for memory. You can always save money there. Uh, motherboard MSI FM2-A55M-E33. Power supply, we've got the CX430. It's bronze certified. Uh, so you'll get 80 plus power efficiency there. Uh, for the case, we've got the Rosewill FBM-01. For hard drive, we've got the Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte drive. And for the DVD drive, we've got the Asus uh, DVD drive. Okay, so first let's jump into comparing these processors. We're going with the Athlon 750K with uh, four cores and four gigahertz max turbo. Uh, it's a little bit hard to compare this with the small factor form CPU like you get with AMD's Jaguar. Uh, which has eight cores and runs typically at 1.6 gigahertz. But uh, if they were both running in a similar machine, then I would definitely give the advantage here to the Athlon 750K. Uh, it's also important to realize, uh, though, that uh, with a PC, you've got intensive task programs in the background, like uh, Windows 8, uh, that uh, just aren't as intense with uh, what you got going on with PlayStation 4. Uh, also, uh, something to think about here for the long road. Uh, in, in practicality terms, this is the difference between sticking to a $400 build and real life because most likely you'd want to spend $20 more here and go with the FX4350 or $40 more and go with the FX6300. Uh, why? Well, multiple reasons. Uh, you'd want to go with an AM3 Plus motherboard simply because it's going to be so much easier to upgrade down the line. Okay, so one thing that everybody wants to talk about is the PC graphics card versus the PlayStation 4 one. Uh, we're going with the Radeon HD 7850 from XFX. This is a one gigabyte card. Uh, it does a great job in games like Battlefield 4. You should be able to pump out about 40 FPS in, in, from the uh, benchmarks that I've been seeing. Um, and especially if you're willing to tweak the settings down in 1080p or even 1200p, uh, you should be able to get uh, to that coveted 60 FPS uh, place where the, the PS4 sits. Um, keep in mind here that the uh, uh, for the PlayStation 4, what they're doing to achieve 1080p on a game like Battlefield 4 is they're upscaling it from 900p. So I really have to give the advantage here to the PC in terms of the cards um, uh, capabilities. And in addition, uh, here's another one of these practicality things. If you're if you're going for the PC, then again, think about spending 20, 30 dollars more and going with a uh, HD 7850 that has uh, two gigabytes of VRAM. I think it's important to keep in mind that Dice recommended three gigabytes for the game, but I've been saying that two is is generally sufficient for a card in, in, in this range, especially if you're if you're tweaking the texture settings down to to get a higher level of FPS. Okay, so for RAM, uh, we've got the four gigabytes of Kingston HyperX that we can afford for the $400 build versus the eight gigabytes for the PlayStation 4. So you have to give a little bit of the advantage to the PlayStation 4. Uh, but you know, you can always add that in the future. You can spend uh, 35 bucks more and get uh, eight gigabytes RAM. Uh, down the line if you feel like you're lacking in any of the areas and you'd be good to go. Okay, so for hard drive, we're going to go with a uh, a 500 gigabyte uh, 
Western Digital Blue hard drive. It is a SATA 3 drive, but the particular motherboard we're going to purchase is not SATA 3 compatible, so really no difference there. Um, but if you spend about 5 or $6 more and go in that $65 price range instead of that $58, $55 to $58 price range, you get a one terabyte drive. Um, on the other hand, Sony's drive is upgradable, which is cool. I like that feature, but uh, you know, it's probably going to be a lot more expensive to pull that drive out uh, and then replace it with another. I know only certain form factors uh, will work in there. Okay, so for a motherboard, uh, I mentioned before we're going with the MSI FM2-A55M-E35. Uh, best way to compare our inexpensive motherboard for the build with the PS4 is to compare the input and output connectors. The PS4 comes with two USB 3 ports and an auxiliary port, uh, Ethernet, uh, Bluetooth 2.1, uh, and for the motherboard we're going to have uh, two PS2 ports, uh, D-Sub, HDMI, four USB 2, three audio, um, four onboard USB 2, uh, and of course the Ethernet connection. Uh, you can say uh, what you want to about this. I'll just call it a tie. I think there's a lot of advantages here when it comes to the PC and the case and and, and how you can access things and, and freedom that way. But, you know, with, with the PS4, you are getting uh, the USB 3.0 support and the Bluetooth support as well. But uh, just, again, another one of these practicality things. If you're willing to spend $10 more and get the MSI FM2-A55M-E35, I think that's that's a more ideal motherboard for this budget build and it will give you a, a USB 3.0 as well as other really important features. Okay, so for case we're going to go with this Rosewill FBM-01 uh, which is the case I generally use in my my budget builds when I'm building for friends or relatives or whoever and they've only got a certain amount of money that they really want to spend. Uh, you know, there's other cases in this category, the NZXT Source 210 uh, is a really good uh, case. The Rosewill Challenger U3, uh, I think that one's 40. The uh, NZXT Source 210 is about 30 bucks. So, uh, two more great cases if you're in this price range. Compare that with the PlayStation 4. Hey, the PlayStation 4 looks a lot more cooler here. Uh, cool, I cooler, a lot more cooler. Hey, that's <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Uh, anyway. I think the PlayStation 4 looks more sleek, at least in front of your TV, so uh, I'll give the advantage there to the PS4. Okay, so with the $400 PC build, we can only afford a DVD, RW, optical drive, um, but uh, don't count it out. I mean, while the PlayStation, you get a Blu-ray drive, and that's great. It'll play Blu-rays for you. It won't play CDs, music CDs, so um, with the lack of options there, I think you got to kind of call it a tie with... with uh, with the PlayStation 4, you got to use Music Unlimited and their Video Unlimited services for these types of things. Um, obviously, Sony wants you to do that. So, again, we'll just call that area a tie. Okay, so now that we've gone over the PC build, uh, let's let, let's take a quick look at the advantages and disadvantages of the PS4 versus this uh, particular $400 PC. Okay, so for the PlayStation 4, you've got good performance for the price. Uh, you know that games will always function. Uh, while the PS4 is relevant for four to five years down the road, you're not going to have to worry about upgrading, getting a different graphics card, things like that. You've got patches instead of drivers, bugs, and fixes. Sometimes that can be annoying as a PC gamer if you, uh, if you have a conflict uh, just out of nowhere. I think we've all had some of those. Uh, PS4 only games. Um, and then also the gameplay itself, you get same platform competition where other players have the same level of detail and texture. You know, when you're on PC games, people can lower their textures to have a higher level of FPS than you or remove fog and things like that and get an advantage. So that uh, does streamline the competition somewhat for the PS4. Uh, the camera provides a unique uh, experience. Obviously, controllers can be purchased for the PC, but the way that the camera will play out in certain games on the PS4 really can't be... Uh, compared to anything on the PC. Uh, and you get that Blu-ray player, so you can play Blu-rays on it. For disadvantages, you've got proprietary connections and lack of support for your PS3 gear. Uh, many gamers are going to have to replace their headsets, controllers, and more. There's a lot of gear out there you're going to need to go get. Uh, there's a limited ability to upgrade it down the line. Like I said, you could change out the hard drive, but you know if you weren't getting the kind of texture and detail that you wanted on a game, let's say just three years down the road, let's say Battlefield 5, how's that going to look? I mean, they look pretty similar on the PC and the PlayStation 4 right now, but what about Battlefield 5 when the PlayStation 4 is still relevant but a little bit older? 
um, it'd be nice to to be able to add a little more power there, a little more juice to make it make them look pretty similar. My guess is the difference will be more than what we're seeing in Battlefield 4. Uh, uh, can't play CDs like I mentioned before. It upscales graphically intense games to reach 1080p, and the graphics can only be pr pushed so far. And also with the PS4, you do not get support for Mantle. Okay, so now let's talk about the advantages and, and the disadvantages of the $400 gaming PC we built. Uh, there's nothing proprietary. You can use whatever gear you want. You've got a headset that you've been using for 10 years. You can still use it anytime. Um, you can easily upgrade it. Uh, and pick the parts that you want and you can even use parts from your old computer you know you could have taken a hard drive from your old computer for this particular build and put four hundred dollars all towards parts just think what you could have gotten you could have gotten an FX 6300 and a two gigabyte uh, HD 7850 so compare that with you've got what you've got in the PS4 and you really have quite a bit more uh, processing and, and graphical power there so uh, you've got 1080p or better graphics uh, you can do everything that PCs do browse edit um, work and uh, there's a lot of PC games that aren't on console either you know everybody's always talking about the new PS4 games and things like that well there's a lot of games on PC that really aren't aren't really viable for uh, PlayStation 4 either and lastly uh, we have mantle support on the PC now disadvantages to the gaming PC you know, we always are tempted to upgrade it, uh, maybe more than it's even needed sometimes, or, you know, I have a new new game. You won't be guaranteed that that game will run smoothly on that computer, and it can be there can be some costly upgrades down the road. There's an OS involved um, if you need that. Um, of course, with the PS4, you're going to have to purchase uh, new gear now that it's the PS4 versus the PS3, so that's a bit of a wash. Uh, with this particular computer, we're using an FM2 socket, which is not ideal to upgrade down the road. Um, I think an AM3 Plus is a much better option if you guys, again, if you can go with that. And we don't have any of the unique camera features that you can get if you spend an additional $60 on the PlayStation 4. Okay, so I honestly want to know what you guys think on this. If you guys will go to my write-up below, there's a link to it, and it'll take you to my website where I've written all of this up, and you can jump right to the poll. You don't have to read all that if you don't want to. If you do, there's a little bit more information, some more in-depth stuff. Uh, and just let me know whether you'd rather have the PS4 or this $400 gaming PC. You know, I've heard a lot of people around the web and even on YouTube say that consoles are the way to go as far as price and everything like that. And I understand that you can be tempted to upgrade your PC beyond a certain point. But I think if you're willing to tweak your settings on the PC, you can just have just as good an experience for just about the same price level. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave me a uh, comment and uh, go vote. And if you like this video, help me out by pressing that like and subscribe button. We've got a video coming up next that uh, is an LAV tutorial for Battlefield 4. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Also, I'm going to have PC builds from $500 to $2,000. Again, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank <music> you.